It has been said that in Twilight Struggle, you need to know the cards well in order to play well. Well, we're going to take you through every card one by one, and we're going to help you become a master at Twilight Struggle. This is Legendary Tactics. Indo-Pakistani War is an event that you will either celebrate or hate depending on where things are in the game. It has the potential of beginning a massive turnaround for one side or the other in Asia, or it can be the last nail in the coffin. Let's take a look at this interesting event. The card is an early war 2 ops neutral card. Triggering the event results in an invasion of either India or Pakistan by the other. Roll one die and subtract one for every opponent controlled country adjacent to the target of the invasion. Player victory is on a modified die roll of four to six and that player adds two to the military ops track. If the player wins the Indo-Pakistani war, the player gains two victory points and replaces all opponent's influence in the target country with his or her influence. The text of this card can be very confusing for new players. I find it's helpful to think of the target of the invasion as the one that you want to flip to your side, as it doesn't really matter that the other country is the invader, at least in game terms. Also remember that Pakistan and India can act as neighboring countries to mitigate the die roll, even though they are the countries involved in the war. It also doesn't matter if the player who triggers the event has any influence in either of those countries. The invasion happens independently of who controls them. A player can even play the card for the event when they control both, simply if they want the military ops or potentially the victory points. This card can be a big deal early on in the game. The threat of having India or an over-controlled Pakistan flip to the other side is quite consequential, and some people joke that it always seems to work for your opponent, but never for you. So in general, if you're going to play for control of that part of the board, you're going to want to not only take Pakistan and India, but their neighbors as well. A side effect of this card's existence is that Afghanistan becomes more attractive to control than it might otherwise be. Anyone looking to control the Pakistan and India duo will likely want to play a couple of ops there. Afghanistan is also valuable to the US player, as it is next to the Soviet homeland and is therefore worth one victory point when Asia is scored. It's attractive to the USSR as well because it's easily accessible and it can potentially tip the country count into domination territory in Asia. It also means that the other neighboring countries, Burma and Iran, take on additional value as a means of lowering the odds of this card succeeding for your opponent. Controlling Burma also happens to add a victory point when the Southeast Asia scoring card is played, and control of Iran adds a battleground country in the Middle East. So there are other benefits to controlling the neighborhood. If you control all three neighboring countries, Pakistan is safe from this event. India, however, is always at risk, even though the odds are pretty good if you control Pakistan and Burma that five out of six times it's going to be okay. But never rule out a lucky die roll on the part of a player who decides to swing for the fences. Or sometimes a desperate US player might find this card useful just to get the military ops, as mentioned earlier, to avoid giving up those victory points at the end of the turn. This is available if there's no other option, even if the invasion at that moment is basically a lost cause. I would say that this is a pretty marginal use of this card though. Likely the two ops are way more useful when played elsewhere. And sometimes both countries are either vacant, especially in the early war, or are already under your control and the event doesn't have any real use at all. In that case, the two ops are perfectly welcome. Sometimes your opponent will get the card and you'll just have to endure the die roll and hope for the best. Another big risk aside from losing control of key Asian battleground countries is that your access to that region might be cut off. If Iran is over controlled by your opponent, it's going to be pretty tough generally to get back into that area as the United States, for example. For the USSR, it might just be too darned expensive if the Americans get an upper hand in that region. One interesting combo in the mid-war is in combination with brush war in Pakistan or even Burma. A lucky roll here means a follow-up with Indo-Pakistani war and it can mean a pretty dramatic moment and potentially a big swing in fortunes. It's a big gamble though, and it depends on everything going right, but if you're going for broke, 
It's something to think about. If the USSR finds the Indo-Pakistani war card in hand, you can drive east directly after a successful coup in Iran without having to worry about it. Just remember to shore up Afghanistan and Burma at some point later. It's not a bad idea for the US to spend an op early on to gain some influence in Afghanistan. If later on you lose the, the Indo-Pakistani war or even have a coup go awry in Iran, then it allows access to both those countries. On the whole, the US is the side more likely to take this event, mainly for the military ops if there are no other ways they can be gotten, and the additional chance of gaining control of an Asian battleground as well as two victory points. It's really not a big sacrifice for two operations points. For either player, this card needs to be reckoned with. It's a destabilizing event that prevents Asia from ever being completely locked down. Plan for it, and with a little luck, you'll be fine. This has been our analysis of the Indo-Pakistani war card here at Legendary Tactics. If you got some value out of this video, please like, please subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you next time. 